Welcome everyone. In this video, we are going to be diving into my top five best teams for the Sunshine Cup. The Sunshine Cup uh, set to drop tomorrow at the time of recording this video. A brand new specialty cup coming along with season 14 of Pokemon Go Battle League. And it takes place at the Great League format, which is a max CP limit of 1500. And it only allows normal, fire, grass, and ground types. So uh, relatively condensed, only four typings allowed. But uh, should allow for some decent play, at least at the very beginning when uh, everyone's still learning before they've tuned into the hacks uh for the meta um and um there's all it's always nice to have a second option when you have something like the open ultra league running alongside it which uh it will be so uh very very solid teams uh some very strong ones to get you started and without further ado let's dive into team number one all right guys here we go team number one a very powerful team for the sunshine cup it leads with pidgeot on the lead Galarian Stunfisk on the safe swap and Diggersby in the back to close the game strong. So the idea behind this team, Pidgeot, is going to protect the back two from any potential grass types. I don't anticipate that there will be too many, but you may see them. And uh, Pidgeot, excellent answer to the grass. And uh, both Pokemon have play up against the most prominent ice type in the meta being a Bomb of Snow. Uh, that's really uh, Pidgeot's uh, Achilles heel and not even really uh, much of one, to be honest. So let's have a look at this scorecard here. And look at that. Not bad at all. We get an A for coverage, A for bulk. A for safety and a C for consistency. Not too bad at all. This is a very strong team here. And holy smokes, look at all these wins from Pidgeot. PV Poke absolutely loves Pidgeot. Let me tell you guys, holy smokes. It does have a tendency to be a bit of a, a sim god at being a Pokemon that does very, very well in the simulations, but things change sometimes in uh actual practice but that's not that's no knock against pidgeot it is still very good make no mistake about that the one uh pokemon worth uh noting i will say will be obama snow as pidgeot does take super effective damage from those powder snows and obama snow does outpace but again i said obama snow is not that much of an achilles seal because at the end of the day it is also a grass type guys which means that you can also deal super effective damage right back so the way i would tackle an obama snow lead is i would play out the ones you're gonna have to shield up that weather ball and uh, get off your feather dance but if you're playing the ones um i always say on this channel uh, if you know you're gonna swap out you might as well maximize your efforts and you can go right for that brave bird but either way works you can throw a feather dance as well and then dip into stunfisk and play on from there that's how i would tackle that play the ones and retreat into stunfisk um what else here that's about it everything else pretty straightforward uh pidgeot wins a lot on the lead as we can see and this has been adjusted for the two shield scenario which is how all matchups begin so uh very accurate depiction of Pidgeot on the lead guys Stunfisk that's a tricky one uh as well uh Stunfisk lead I would I would stay in there and try and catch that rock slide on your own Stunfisk because you don't want to immediately come into that at an energy disadvantage with your own Stunfisk um you could also safe swap Diggersby Diggersby does have a clean victory over Stunfisk in the twos but again you will be behind on energy so Catching that rock slide is nice while storing that energy if you know your counts. But if not, you know, do what you have to do. You can't come in with Diggersby as well. But if you're making a solid team read, you could also come in with G-Fist. But that is one that you are not staying in on whatsoever. Same goes for Mag Cargo, both Pokemon in the back. Thoroughly handle Mag Cargo, no problemo. And uh, yeah, pretty straightforward team. I just really wanted to highlight Obama Snow. That, that might be one that would uh, uh, get a lot of you a little bit flustered, especially especially day one, so I did want to go over that. But that is team number one. Pidgeot on the lead, Stunfisk on the safe swap, and Diggersby in the back to bring it home for you. So with all that said, let's have a look at team number two. All right, here we go. Team number two, another very powerful team for the Sunshine Cup. And it leads with Vigoroth on the lead, Knocked Owl on the safe swap, and Pidgeot in the back to close the game strong. Another very powerful ABB style team. I truly believe that is the best way 
to uh, get some good traction in these limited formats. A strong ABB style team also happens to be a triple normal team, which I am uh, always a fan of. Now, you can run this uh, back line with a number of leads. Um, I chose Vigoroth because it beats the other two common uh, leads that you will see with these two Pokemon, that being Swampert and Galarian Stunfisk. Uh, I think Vigoroth is the best option uh, to pair with these two on the lead because it's going to handle those Ice and Steel types, uh, plain and simple, and it beats the other two anti-Steels in the meta, being Stunfisk and... uh, anti uh steals uh and uh swampert so uh let's have a look at the scorecard here and look at that not bad not bad at all really uh a for coverage we do get a c for bulk vigoroth and pidgeot do bring the bulk score down a little bit but that is okay uh you're gonna see that in these limited formats uh a for safety and a b for consistency so very very strong scorecard here for team number two and guys if that C for the bulk uh, is really uh, um, glaring and you just can't bear to have a C uh, for your bulk score, go ahead and throw Stunfisk on the lead. That's going to be the second best option. It's just going to be a little bit tricky playing out those 50-50 mirror matchups. I would much rather win lead uh, than have to um, go through a mind-numbing mirror matchup here. Uh, so again, if that bulk score really bothers you guys, throw Stunfisk on. You will get a B for bulk. Uh, but otherwise, we're rolling Vigoroth here for now. That is what I would highly recommend. That's what I'm going to be running when I do feature this team. Uh, so Pidgeot on the lead can be a bit tricky, but Vigoroth fights back because it does neutral damage with those counters. Most flying types happen to have a normal typing as well. Why? I have no idea. Go figure. But that just works even better for a Pokemon like Vigoroth. You do thoroughly outpace. But after they get off their first Feather Dance, it might you might be experiencing some diminishing returns staying in on that lead. So... You can let them get that off and then look to make an aggressive play in a knockdown and mix it up a little bit. But ultimately, uh, Pidgeot cannot do it all. And that's the only one I really wanted to highlight. A uh, bit of a team effort with a Pidgeot lead, but really very much manageable. Everything else, uh, pretty straightforward. You're swapping out on the Gly scores, a Jump Pluff if you do happen to run into one, or even a uh, random Blaziken that you may see pop up every now and then. Uh, so yeah, uh, otherwise you're staying in and you are just going to allow Vigoroth to do what it does best. And that is implement that patented body slam spam. Uh, so that is team number two, Vigoroth on the lead, knocked out on the safe swap and Pidgeot in the back. So with all that said, that is team number two. Let's have a look at team number three. All right. Up next team number three, we've got Obama snow on the lead. Vigoroth on the safe swap and double in the back for team number three. Now, for those of you who may not have a double, basically any normal type that has some solid steel or ice type coverage would work. Um, most notably, Obstagoon. I would say that's the best replacement. You could also roll with Diggersby um, or any other one of the very bulky normal types. But Obstagoon is going to be your best bet as a replacement. And I would say... Um, a nice third option would be a Diggersby. But uh, yeah, this team is going to protect your back two from the Flyers. And the back two are going to protect Obama Snow from the Steels. That's how the team is designed. And this is the scorecard here. We're looking pretty good. We've got uh, B for coverage, C for bulk, B for safety, and an A for consistency. Not bad. Very strong scorecard for team number three here. Let's have a look at these matchups. So now, one massive obstacle for this team, I'm not going to lie, is going to be Blaziken. I don't anticipate we'll be seeing too many, but we could absolutely see it. After, after, after all, it is eligible. I just think it being so squishy may deter a lot of people from using it. But if you do happen to run into it, that is one lead that you cannot stay in on whatsoever. Uh, Blaziken is a nightmare for Obama Snow. It's going to take a team effort between Vigoroth and your third. So you're immediately going to go into Vigoroth. And those counters from Vigoroth really add up on the very, very squishy Blaziken. Um, your best hope is that they actually stay in on that. 
and you can put in work with Vigoroth. Try and get rid of the Blaziken if at all possible, but if things go awry and they do swap out, try at the very least to grab a shield advantage with Vigoroth. Vigoroth is one of the best Pokemon at grabbing a shield advantage, which is why it's such a good safe swap amongst other other reasons. Uh, and if you can set it up with a shield advantage, Blaziken down a shield does not perform very well. So team effort, um, not impossible. Everything else is also is a uh, pretty much straightforward. Something like a Talonflame. Again, I don't know how many we'll see, but it is eligible. You're going into Vigoroth. Vigoroth thoroughly outpaces Talonflame. And again, you'll want to grab that shield advantage if at all possible. Uh, and an opposing Vigoroth. Um, that's one that you can mess around with a little bit. Um, <sighs> Off of the top of my head, I can't recall if Obama Snow wins CMP over Vigoroth. I know it's very close, but you can play out the ones. You'll want to chip that Vigoroth, uh, and you'll have to play out the ones because they're likely not going to throw immediately. They're going to overload. So you're going to have to shield up that first body slam, get off your weather ball. They'll likely let it go, but if they're really uh, concerned about an Obama Snow lead, they will also shield. But most important, you want to come in at a health advantage with your own Vigoroth and look to play on from there. If things go awry, double can handle a Vigoroth at a health advantage as well. Something like an Obstagoon, both Pokemon in the back handle. Obstagoon, no problem. And yeah, the fire types, you're just out of there uh, in the Vigoroth and looking to play on. But everything else in between, pretty straightforward. you got some very solid victories on the lead with Obama Snow. So yeah, that is team number three here. Obama Snow on the lead, Vigoroth on the safe swap, and double in the back. So with all that said, that is team number three. Let's have a look at team number four. All right, moving on to team number four. Another pretty interesting team for this Sunshine Cup meta. Leads with Blaziken on the lead, Munchlax running Tackle on the safe swap, and Miltank also running Tackle uh, in the back. So the idea behind this team, Blaziken being so frail, you want to have some bulk. And uh, the purpose that these two Pokemon serve in the bag is to mostly serve as damage sponges while also being able to deal nice, consistent, neutral damage across the board. That's how this team is designed. You save those shields for Blaziken to absolutely wreak havoc. Uh, so let's have a look at the scorecard here. And not bad. Identical to team number three. We get a B for coverage. C for bulk. Blaziken does have that effect on a bulk score. B for safety and an A for consistency. So very solid. Um, and uh, by the way, guys, if you don't have... Um, a mill tank or a munchlax, some suitable replacements. Uh, first and foremost would be Greedent. Greedent uh, also has tackle, and it is recommended that you do run tackle and body slam. Uh, uh, Diggersby will also serve as a suitable replacement um, for either one. Um, and uh, Dunsparce will also be uh, quite solid as well. So three solid replacements if you don't have one or either of these two so the scorecard uh, pidgeot is going to be uh, the biggest obstacle for this team it's not worth it to stay in there and try and uh chip and dip because blaziken being so fragile that flat that fast move pressure with stab from pidgeot is just too much and before you know it you're at 50 percent health and having to shield up a um feather dance so that's not one that i would mess around with i would just immediately go into munchlax and the idea with munchlax is to draw out a steel type because you have the potential to maybe flip switch under the perfect circumstances by having access to bulldoze but that is a long shot you you basically just want to draw that out in the bag so that blaziken can get a nice healthy farm that's how the team is designed as uh, so a pidgeot you're not staying in you're going in the munchlax knocked out that's another one knocked out just too bulky and that 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 fast move pressure is just a little too much the only flyer i will say that you can mess around with a little bit would be a jump bluff because you do outpace and win cmp tie to the super effective blaze kicks and it is recommending that you run stone edge i don't know if you really need to fork over a precious elite uh charge tm for that i think brave bird uh will get the job done in most circumstances but yeah that's one where you can um 
play around a little bit, chip and dip. If you're really good on your counts, catch that move onto one of your bulky normal types in the back. Tropius, again, runs a flying type fast move. That's not one that you'll want to mess around on, as both Pokemon in the back do have solid victories over both of those two very bulky grass flying types, that being uh, Tropius and Jumpluff. But uh, aside from Pidgeot, uh, that's really the, the one that I really wanted to hammer home, home with you guys. Everything else is pretty straightforward. You're going to be winning lead on those normals. Um, most everything in the meta, uh, the counters with Stab is just a lot uh, to for, for most Pokemon in this meta to handle. So yeah, I just wanted to highlight Pidgeot, and uh, that's how I would play Pidgeot. So uh, that is team number four, Blaziken on the lead, Munchlax on the safe swap, and Miltank in the back. So with all that said, that is team number four. Let's have a look at team number five. All right, guys, last but certainly not least, team number five. And it leads with Shadow Victory Bell on the lead. Galarian Stunfisk on the safe swap and Steelix in the back to bring it home for you. Now, if you don't have a Steelix, you can just run Diggersby. That will uh, that will suffice. Uh, but you basically want to protect Victory Bell from a potential Obama Snow and maybe the occasional Poison Jabber. Uh, there are some that are eligible. Um, but otherwise, uh, you just let Victory Bell do what it does, and that is just absolutely obliterate everything with those Shadow Razor Leafs on the lead. And uh, we've got two tanky Steel types at that. Um, a a, a time-tested concept, Grass Double Steel. We see it all the time in the Great League. This is the Sunshine Cup version here. Let's have a look at this scorecard here. And not bad. Pretty, pretty solid overall. We get a B for coverage, B for bulk, C for safety, and a B for consistency. Let's have a look at these matchups. So, Victory Bell in the lead. Very interesting. Not one that you probably have thought too much about in this meta. But just think about it. Vigoroth, Obstagoon, uh, those types are going to be everywhere, guys. Uh, Diggersby, uh, Victory Bell handles all of those. It's just going to have some trouble with, of course, Obama Snow. That's a nightmare. And, of course, the two uh, prominent flyers being Pidgeot and Noctowl. We've got answers for those in the back. Um, however, Nine Tails, Kanto Nine Tails, that's going to be the trickiest one. Um, I can Fire is the weakest typing in the entire meta. I don't know how many fire types we'll see, but you never know. It could pop up. You never know. So uh, again, uh, Nine Tails going to take a team effort. That's not one that you're staying in on. You're immediately going in the Stunfisk. Stunfisk is your best matchup, but they may stay in seeing that you uh, swapped in a Stunfisk and uh, you'll look to play on from there. If you can grab a shield advantage, you'll be in good shape um, because uh, if Steelix is stuck with that uh, Kanto Ninetales, at least having a shield advantage will give you uh, the best chance of perhaps pulling it out. But otherwise, everything else is pretty straightforward. We've got solid coverage for, our, for for its most common weaknesses, being most notably Pidgeot, Noctowl, and Obama Snow. Uh, everything else, uh, if you see a Victini, that you can you can get out of there uh, into your Stunfisk. That's another one that's going to be a little bit tricky, much like Kanto Ninetales. Nine tails. Uh, it's going to take a bit of a team effort, but everything else pretty straightforward. I wanted to highlight those two uh, fire types. You're swapping out on the Obama Snows, Noctowls, and Pidgeots as well, and we've got amazing coverage for those three. Everything else in between, you're going to be doing quite well against Double. You're going to handle on the lead, Vigoroth, um, Diggersby, Obstagoon. You're going to handle all of those no problem. And the Pokemon that it can't handle, we've got covered for in the back. So, that is team number five, Victory Bell on the lead, Stunfisk on the safe swap, and Steelix in the back. And if you don't have a Steelix, you can run Diggersby. Um, but that's that's gonna be, uh, that that about wraps it up. Holy smokes! Uh, for my top five best teams for the Sunshine Cup, uh, for a relatively limited meta, but a nice change of pace from the Open Ultra League um, should be very interesting. But guys, I had a blast. I hope you all enjoyed. As always, I thank you for watching and keep up the grind. Thank you, guys.